three, two, one, Dr. Payan. All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to solve a really cool question. Namely, are there functions such as f of f of f of x equals to x? First of all, you may wonder why did I go up like three powers? Because, well, the first question is, of course, are there functions such as f of x equals to x? Well, there was is only one function, right? The identity function. So it's not a very interesting question, okay? Then, of course, the next question is, are there functions such as f of f of x equals to x? In other words, are there functions such as f equals to its own inverse? And this is also not a very good question because there are many of them. There's like, for example, f of x equals to x satisfies that. Okay, not very interesting. f of x equals to minus x satisfies that. Yep. Okay, and then uh, um, other functions. Again, think functions that are reflective around the line y equals to x. There's also f of x equals to a minus x. Yep. It's also reflective around the uh, line. And then there's also other functions. If you don't really care about continuity, then there's also 1 over x. You can also reflect it around the line y equals to x. Except if you really want it, you define it 0 at 0. Then it's defined for all x. There's also minus 1 over x. where f of 0 is 0, and there are other functions. So it turns out there's one, I don't know how to draw it, but ln of e to the x plus 1 over e to the x minus 1. You can also verify that this is its own inverse. People are interested against all this, okay? And, and also here it's like undefined at 0, so you do f of 0 equals to 0. So the point is the question of finding f such as f of f of x equals to x is pretty open, you know, like there's no clear criterion. That's why I'm asking myself, what if you go to the third power? Is it something more interesting? And yes, it is. Because here's what I'm going to show. Oh, no, sorry. I erased the whiteboard. Again. It's OK. It's OK. okay. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to show. Suppose f is a function from r to r. And f of f of f of x equals to x, and f is continuous. Then I'm going to show that the only function that satisfies this is f of x equals to x. So the only function to the f of f of f of x equals to x, and that is continuous, is f of x equals to x. Mm. And interestingly, all the three hypotheses are very important. Well, of course, you need this hypothesis, otherwise a different problem. You also need that f goes from r to r. And what's important, this is wrong for complex numbers. Because you could have f of x is multiplication by any cube root of 1. For example, e to the 2 pi i over 3 x. If you do it, it is, one, it is invertible, and if you apply it three times, you get this cube, which becomes 1, and you do get f of f of f of x equals to x. So it's important that it's from r to r, and continuity is also important, because I believe x minus 3 over x plus 1 would be a counterexample. It's another function that's continuous, whose third power is the identity. Okay, and how do we show this? It's really, really cool. So step one. So suppose we have f of f of f of x equals to x. So suppose, let's call it f cubed of x equals to x. First of all, I'm claiming, so we don't know yet that f is invertible, but let me show it's invertible. I'm claiming that f is 1 to 1. And the proof is very cute. Suppose f of x equals to f of y. We want to show f equals to y. So we want to show x equals to y. And so let's just apply f to this equation. 
So f of f of x equals to f of f of y. Let's apply it three times. f of f of f of x is f of lots of f's. <laughs> so lots of f's are given here. Okay? Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. All right, but what do we know about f cubed? We know that it's the identity, so we get x equals to y. So in fact, f is 1 to 1, and also f is on to, but we actually won't really need this today. That's because if y is given, we want to find uh, x such that y equals to f of x, but notice, because f cubed of x equals to x, f cubed of y equals to y, so y is f cubed of y, and that's f of f of f of y. See, so if this is x, then we get y equals to f of x. So indeed it is onto. For any given y, we can find x such that y equals to f of x. But as I said, we don't need the onto ness today. We actually just need one to one. And now comes the next step. We know that f has to be one to one, and I'm claiming that it has to be either increasing or decreasing. It cannot be both. So step, I guess step two. So claim, so Basically, and here's where the continuity comes into play, if f is 1 to 1 and continuous from r to r, then f is either strictly increasing or it's strictly decreasing. Either increasing or decreasing. Okay. Why is that true? And I guess let's prove by picture. <laughs> Sorry about that. But uh, what would it mean for something to be not increasing? It means that there are points A, B, and C such that, well, F of B is greater than F of A. But then F of C is smaller than that. or some other scenario, which I'll talk in a second. So we know that f of b is greater than f of a, and f of b is greater than f of c. Or a function not like that looks like this. It's decreasing and then increasing. In other words, so this is a, b, and c. There are points a, b, and c such that f of b is less than f of a, and f of b is greater than f of c. So you can convince yourself that any function that's neither increasing or decreasing has to satisfy those properties. And look, then we can just use the intermediate value theorem because they have to be simultaneously points x and 1 and x2, x2, such that f of x1 equals to f of x2. So then by, I, whoa, whoa, see, that's what I told you. Uh, we, we have to, no, technical difficulties, first of all, we have to turn on the lights. Oh, oh. man. Oh, hold on. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right, there we go. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> why though? Why is that? Huh? Because okay. I said the sensors, at some point, they turn off. Okay. Because there's no one in this part or this part. Okay, so okay. So the room thinks there's no one there. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Okay, anyway. And then, <laughs> we're back. <laughs> then, what do we know by the IVT, intermediate value theorem, because f is continuous, this implies f of x1 equals to f of x2, for x1 not equal to x2. But then, that would, that would uh, contradict the fact that f is 1 to 1. 1 to 1 is precisely the opposite. It says that if x1 is not equal to x2, then the outputs have to be different. And same thing here, x1 and x2. Then f of x1 would be equal to f of x2, and that's a problem. All right, so that's very good. We know that in particular, our mystery function f 
has to be either increasing or either decreasing. And without loss of generality, assume it's decreasing because I'm... Um, no, not without loss of generality. Uh, assume it's decreasing, uh, we will show there's a contradiction with that. So we will in fact show f is increasing. So I guess it's step three. Now I did run out of whiteboards, so let me erase that. Step three. So show f is increasing. It's increasing, and we do this by contradiction. So suppose f is decreasing, then if b is greater than a, we get f of b is less than f of a. That's because f is decreasing, and you have to understand decreasing means you always alternate the signs. So then f of b is greater than f, so f of f of b, if you apply f to that, it switches the signs again. And if you apply it thrice, it switches the signs again. So f of f of f of b, again, we're back at this f's, okay, is less than f of f of f of a. It's a good thing I didn't do it for five f's, right? That would have been horrible. But, but this thing, would, I think, would still hold for five f's. Okay. Then what we get, well, f cubed is the identity. So we indeed get b is less than a. So we've shown that if b is greater than a, then b is less than a. And that's a contradiction. I'm sorry. And so contradiction with what? Contradiction with the fact that f is decreasing. So in fact, a mystery function has to be increasing. And now we can conclude. Let's show that f is in fact the identity. So the grand finale. Let's show that f of x equals to x. Well, suppose if not. Suppose there's some mystery value x such that f of x is not equal to x. Well, if two numbers are not equal, then one of them is smaller than the other. So it's either f of x is less than x or f of x is greater than x. And now remember, we know that f is increasing, so applying f to it, so f of f of x is less than f of x. And then again, f of f of f of x is less than f of f of x. And so x is less than f of f of x. And so, on the other hand, but, so what do we get? We get that f of f of x. So this implies f of f of x. Well, we found it's greater than x, and that's greater than f of x. And this is greater than f of f of x. So we get a contradiction because we find f of f of x is greater than f of f of x. And that's not possible. So f of x is not less than x. Okay. Let's do the same spiel here. f of f of x, it's greater than f of x. f of f of f of x, it's greater than f of f of x. Now let me erase that. So, x is greater than f of f of x. And again, let's find some contradiction. Then we get f of f of x. It's less than x by here. So look from the right side. This is less than that. x is less than f of x. And f of x is less than f of f of x. In particular, this quantity f of f of x is greater than f of f of x. And so this is also a contradiction. And therefore, in both cases, we got a contradiction. 
So it is not true that f of x is not equal to x, and therefore f of x equals to x. So the only function that is continuous, one-to-one, uh, -one and such that, uh, no, just continuous and um, f cubed equals to x is um, this one, <laughs> f of x equals to x. Cool. So it's really cool, huh? Like, very yeah. non-intuitive, but yeah. it's cool, yeah. yeah. All right, so if you like that and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Yay. Woo -hoo.